Hello and welcome. Renewable energy has an important role to play, not just in uh, offsetting the, the carbon footprint, but also becoming an important source of energy in future. Latin America and countries like Mexico have in some ways taken the lead in new companies coming up in setting up or producing renewable energy or uh, uh, alternative fuels like biodiesel. Joining me is the head of one such company, uh, Total, Total Energy. The, I'm joined by the president of the company, Jorge Lopez Morton. Mr. Morton, thank you so much for uh, joining us. So uh, uh, you're, a, you're a company that's been producing biodiesel from Jatropa for the last eight years in Mexico. We have been producing biodiesel initially from used cooking oil. Okay. We have a company that recollects the used cooking oil from restaurants and companies that produce potato chips. And we use that oil uh, to produce biodiesel as well as glycerin. Uh, we at this moment are starting to plant uh, 5,000 he hectares of Jatropa uh, to produce additional volumes of biodiesel in, it, in Mexico. Right. So, uh, how? What are the economics of, of uh, the production and and the sell uh, and the sale of uh, biodiesel? Well, the numbers are adequate, and we have a good return on our investment. Basically, because in Mexico. Uh, the prices of diesel have been increasing on a monthly basis since two years ago. Uh, we have been very competitive in the purchases of our Was it because materials. it was administered earlier or the, the pricing or? Well, what, what we did is uh, the, the, the prices of diesel in Mexico were very low compared to the international prices. So because Mexico. it was subsidized. It was were completely subsidized. Right. We have nearly 40% of subsidy compared to the international markets. The tendency of the, our new government is to have the prices of the diesel to be equivalent to the prices of diesel in the United States. Uh, that it permits us to have a market which is growing in, in price for ourselves, and that permits us to keep on growing uh, in the company. Uh, that's why we are tending to increase our volume capacity. We, want, we are going to double the capacity this year in investment. And uh, we have the idea to have double what we will have this year by next year. Uh, additionally, that because of the Jatropa plantations that we will have. We are also looking at the technology from India uh, to produce algae and from there to produce biodiesel as well. Uh, we have been talking to some Indian companies to, to sell us the, te the technology for Mexico. Right. So, what's the kind of? Uh, uh, I mean, what's the, is? You said cooking oil is most of what you source your as is is your major raw material right now, and Jatropa will take over at some point when. That's right. At, at present, for the last eight years, used cooking oil has been our main raw material. In order to increase our volume, we have to go to other sources of production of uh, oil, and that's why we are planting the Jatropa plantations, and we're also looking at the alga production. Uh, we have another project to produce diesel, and that is with the product uh, using plastic, the used plastic, and transform it into diesel. We have already a pilot plant in Mexico. We have a very good quality diesel from there, and uh, we're taking advantage of the waste in this case. Right. You know, so some many Indian companies have also gone the uh, Jatropa route for making biodiesel, uh, but because of the price variations or not insufficient price. Uh, variation between you know the selling price and the cost of production uh, they've been forced to cut back uh, is, is do you see that as a problem we are using a different type of uh, plant than the one that is being used in India mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, with the Jatropa we have in Mexico we will be able to use the glycerin which is the byproduct as another product to be selling into the market so basically we will have two products from the plantation of Jatropa in the case of India because of the, the type of plant that you're using, you can only use the oil for biodiesel, but you're not using the glycerin to be sold. So we have an, an additional income that uh, the Indian market is not having. So what's the, kind of, what's the opportunity that you see for non-conventional fuels or fuels like biodiesel? Uh, well, we see a huge uh, potential in this market. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, uh, the, air the airlines have a mandate by the year 2020, they will have to start using biodiesel. If they don't use it, there will be a penalty for them in the market. Also, uh, we are looking at companies to reduce the footprint of their products. So let's say if we sell our biodiesel to a company that is producing chips or producing soap 
that they want to export to another market. Uh, the benefits for them is that the, the footprint of their product into the market will be less than companies that are not using a uh, biodiesel. So that will give them an advantage in the market and they will not be as you know, punished as much as the other companies. So uh, the green can be greener if we tend to help uh, the final users, in this case the industry, uh, to change their, their, their sources of energy. Right, so one last question. Uh, do you see non-conventional fuels uh, being becoming bigger without any subsidy help or any government help in any country for, the, for that matter? Well, in the, in, in the case of Latin America, for example, uh, I see biodiesel as a great opportunity because most of the countries are importing products from, from the oil. So basically, when you produce a biodiesel, you can reduce the cost of production and be at a lower prices than the traditional diesel in the market. Uh, so for us to be competitive in the international markets, uh, we need to bring down the cost of our fuels into, the, into our industry. So we, we see a great opportunity in the biodiesel market in America. Right, Mr. Martin, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night.